When taking apart the Magnavox D8443, um, there's a series of screws all around the back side, including two inside the battery compartment. One in the middle of the battery compartment and one underneath one of the springs in the battery compartment. I have this unscrewed right now, so I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and lift the case carefully. It goes straight up. One thing you'll have to watch out for is this antenna connector. You need to pull it from the receiver board and as an option you can remove these two wires from the, the back piece if you want to remove the back piece completely. It's, it works just as easy to lift it up and set it aside because these are soldered on. There's, there's not a connector on either end that you know, just easily comes off so you will have to unsolder them so I just I just leave it be to get to the cassette mechanism you have to remove this main board here um, on I think there's more than the number of screws I currently have in place this is a used boom box and I believe the previous owner had uh, done some work on it probably forgot to put a few of the screws back in but you need to remove this screw this one as far as I know it's all the screws that you see exposed should be removed um, there's two short ones up here or there might be a third short one uh, oh, wait a minute not all the screws there's two I guess flat topped uh, black screws here, those don't get removed. Uh, and there's some down here too. I think this one's stripped. And then this one. The ones down here are longer. And then this board should just kind of lift up out of the way. You may have to finagle it a little bit unless you want to remove all these wires you're going to have to kind of set it aside um, the goal is to get it get into this part here the gear is down there the, the gear that needs to be changed or replaced so I'm just going to set this up as best as I can just to prop it out of my way okay you'll need a uh, flat blade screwdriver to remove this screw that will allow you to lift this cover clamp whatever it is that holds down the flywheel this is also the device that has the metal pin on the cap stand in the uh, cassette mechanism area now my belt's green that's because it's a temporary replacement um, oh, one other thing you need to remove with the Phillips screwdriver is the screw that holds down this white post this nylon post I should use a finer tip screwdriver You don't have to take the screw all the way out, just far enough that you can pull this straight up. Yeah, there's my belt. I had replaced it a while back, and I think it's a, what is that, a hippo? A cow? A cow. It works, believe it or not. It works. Okay. Now, you need to get to the gear. You have to remove this piece here. Now, this is a gear that I had already put in. I am going to take this one out to replace it with another one to test its fit. But you can see here there is um, there are straight teeth and then there's helical teeth. And they actually match up with the teeth on this gear. So it's it's uh, actually do they Yes they do. They they those are the ones that match matches up with. So take this out, set it aside. Here comes the really fun part. 
actually I don't like doing this part any more than I have to um, but this piece here which is orange on mine could be black could be another color on yours that needs to come out too because that holds down this cam gear and then this cam gear needs to be removed carefully that allow you to get to this gear so to remove this piece here we got to remove this wire and you'll have to look at your own to see how it works it's kind of hard for me to get a, a decent picture here but this wire goes down through a um, there is a piece of plastic down here that has a kind of a slot in it and then underneath that slot is a is kind of a hole that's drilled into this black casing that wire has to go down through both of those to work properly because it's my understanding that this gear is part of the auto stop mechanism for um, for fast forward reverse and play so first thing we need to do is carefully lift this wire up out of that hole and unhook it from there that should allow us to lift it up and pull it out of that spot right there we'll set that aside this piece here is this is why I'm always afraid to do this stuff it should just pull straight up and out but it's not gonna always work that way there it is you can see the tabs on it that's what holds it see if I can get a little closer you can see the tabs on it there that's what holds it in that hole right there set this aside here is the real trick I'll try to zoom in so you can see it better okay this cam gear is held in by three little tabs that clamp around a it's like a um, it's like a guide or a groove that's just below the top of the pin now to take this out you have to be really careful because you don't want to break any of them or you have yourself bigger problems what I'm going to try to do is to carefully pry one of the pins away and lift up on the gear slightly while I go try prying another pin away and if I get two of them loose I might be able to get the third one loose and for that I'll probably just use a tiny uh, screwdriver or an awl I will use a tiny screwdriver so I need to get under this gear get behind one of these pins carefully pry it away while lifting up and then I'll do the next one same way carefully pry it away while lifting up and if I got those locked out there we go third one's out it's scary each and every time I do it just try to remember the orientation of the cam because it's got an oblong um, mechanism in there now you can see this little piece right here that's the one the thinner slot is where the wire will go down into now that I got this piece out this piece which yours will most likely be missing or probably you have broken teeth should come right up that nothing that I know of holds this down other than the other gear so I'm testing out a new gear to make sure I get a decent fit this is the new replacement gear and that's what I was afraid of it's a little tight just a little tight so I need to bore out the hole a little bit more the hole is slightly bigger than a 5 64th drill bit but you can get almost anywhere you can get drill bit sets so I'm going to set up my drill and I'm going to just run it in here run it back and forth a few times and see if it fits still a little tight okay I'll make it a little bigger
everybody knows this trick right kind of bore out the hole in a piece of plastic still a little tight I don't know if these pins are all the standard, same standard size, so I'm doing my best with them. So it's starting to go on now. There we go. It slipped right on, and it spins freely. Key point. Spins freely. Now you can test this by putting this gear back on or this uh, piece back on get it down in there and then turn it and as you turn it it has to be just right or else it's, the gears aren't going to mesh so hold it centered like this and as you spin this that gear should turn and it is so it's meshing properly um, I also want to test one other thing out here That's a good guide. The hole should be big enough to fit. Uh, I wasn't even getting this in camera, was I? Here's a good test for fit. Let me zoom out. This piece here, the hole in the gear should be big enough to slip this over that pin. Very good reference. It's a little snug, but it it does push on. So put that on there. Okay. Now my cam gear should go right back on. About the same orientation. Snaps in. We'll just give it a quick wiggle. Okay, those are turning just fine. That means the upper gears are meshing. And now the, all the fun stuff. This plastic piece should go in. The way my gear was set, this little pin here goes into the most outer slot in the cam gear. Like that. Next piece is the wire. my pliers. I'll snap the wire into the clip that's on the orange piece. Might need a little help here. Drop it in that way. Now I'll put the back one on the back part where the wire is supposed to go. See, this thing gets all over the place. Back wire here goes underneath goes underneath the orange clip and at the same time it goes uh, to the looking down from the top it goes to the left of this rail here to feel for the other hole that it's going to go through. Once it's in, it should be noticeably in. Just like that, it's underneath that clip, the other wire is underneath that clip, and to this side of it's like a metal, oh, oh, uh, plastic rail there, this is in place. Don't worry, before we completely close this up, we're going to test it. Um, next piece to go on will be cam gear now this piece here may or may not come off when you pull it out um, it's got three notches in it all around and down in that hole there's three guides three pins that hold it in place so just try to get that to match up it'll make things a whole lot easier for you um, another thing you might want to try is taking that 
brass piece off and dropping it in there and getting it to mesh. It should be easy to do with, uh, there we go, just with a very small screwdriver. Kind of drops right in. Because if you don't get that in the whole way, you're going to have a hard time putting the top bracket on this. Now, I put the uh, put this flywheel in and I'll hold it center and I'll give it a spin and I'll see if this outer cam gear starts to move, which it should and it is doing that. That's a good sign. Next, the rubber band. Remember this band is a square cross section so although it'll work if you put a twist in it um, if you're like me you, you don't like that idea of putting a twist in the in the rubber band you like it to look really neat and again if I really liked it to look neat I wouldn't have used a silly band but hey it works and I have yet to to order any replacement drive belts, drive bands. Okay, so that's in. And then we'll put this down. Two tabs, top tab. They go in one spot. It's fairly obvious. Get the screw in there. Down. Uh, that noise is my phone. Okay, so that seems to be doing good. This thing spins, and that new gear is also making the cam gear spin, so that's all good. Now for the test. This is where I like to be a little careful. I try to check the board here to see if. Uh, let, me, let me pull this back out a bit. I try to hold this board away so it's not touching anything that it shouldn't be touching. Um, I mean, ideally, I would be closing the lid on this to uh, to test it, but I'm not going to right now. I'm just going to kind of set it aside on top of things, make sure it's not going to hit anything or bind anything up. So all I'm going to do is just see this mechanism. Turn. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. And I'm going to hit the play button. And there we go. Let me see if I can't get this closer and show you that the cam is turning. That gear is working. Hit stop and I'll do fast forward so we have the cam running and that gear spinning that gear is probably going to fail next uh, it's, it looks the same way as the original gear that failed I'll hit stop I'll hit rewind now there's no tape in it so it's it's stopping okay but it does work. It, it's, the gear is doing what it's supposed to do. It's turning that cam gear and the wire seems to be in a good spot. It's behaving properly. You can see the mechanism, see how it's working. You can also see where the wire goes through. So hopefully that'll give, give you everything you need to install this gear. Go ahead and unplug it. But yes, by all means, please unplug your radio when you're really going to work inside of it. Now, one thing I have to put back is this nylon stand. 
Let's see if I can get a good view in here. It kind of goes over the belt. There's a little, there's a little half moon mark here where the screw goes through, and you can see in the outer black casing where that half moon slides into. Just slide it straight in and straight down. Let the screwdriver do all the work. Okay, I'll put the uh, board back on. Some things to watch out for. There's the, um, the radio switch here, tape radio switch. Make sure you get that to go through the hole in the top of the box. Um, on the outside of the case is the um, microphone selector switch. Make sure you have that in place and in about the right spot as the switch that's on the board that it's going to drop down into. Um, everything will be obvious there when you look at it. In fact, I think I've ignored it many times and it just kind of finds its own way, but it's something to, to look for. And then make sure you don't have any wires covering up any of the, the holes that you plan on putting screws in. Going, going around the outside of the board here. Make sure all these wires are clearing any of the holes, the posts for those holes uh, in the board. You don't want to pinch any of those when you screw it back down. And then just put the screws back in. Like I said, mine has fewer screws than most others because this one has been worked on before by somebody else. Sometimes they just don't start right. There we go. And that's sitting okay. Now I will carefully put the cover back on. Never mind the noises around here. There's all sorts of things in my workshop. Don't forget when you put the cover back on that you put this antenna wire back where it belongs. On the far right edge of the board looking at it from this angle. The far right edge of the radio board is the uh, tab that the antenna wire goes on. And then when you put the cover on, I like to leave the screws in if at all possible. That way I don't lose them. Um, but some people like to take them out. There's different size screws. Is, screw, yeah. Different size screws on this thing so you have to be careful. But be careful about your antenna wire when you put this one down because Mine always seems to get in the way and it tends to want to pinch, so got that on. Close it up. Set this back up. Make sure that, uh, let's see, I'll plug it in. Turn on the radio, make sure I get. Okay, get radio. Now, let's look at the tape. into a little bit of Mike and the Mechanics side one. Here we go. Play. <laughs> of 
course I get the song that has uh, some quiet. There we go. I only have it up on three right now, so but it's working. It's playing. Hit stop. I'll fast forward. Fast forward is working. Hit stop. I'll hit rewind. Rewind's working. And let me try a different tape here. Uh, yeah, we'll do this one. An obscure one hit wonder band called Too New. I'll hit rewind. Make sure it auto stops like it did. Now I'll hit play. Now the crackling and hiss you hear, there's there's an issue with my volume control. That's my next project on it. It gets a little dirty and sounds bad from time to time. This is ponderous, man. Really ponderous. And it's working. Decent speed, too. That's exactly how it should sound. You may notice that my tape counter is not rolling. That's because I don't have the rubber band or the, the drive belt that drives the tape or tape counter roller. I will be getting one someday, but I just don't have them. Alright, there it is. Nobody remembered who I was. Replacement gear. So I decided to take it. My flaky volume control. On my way out, run into my boss. He says, hey. You look familiar. I said thanks. Okay, anybody who uh, a lot in these tricks. orders one of these gears, um, My shoes. it's not too difficult to put in as long as you follow the um, follow steps and pay attention to what where everything was when you put it back. Um, and hopefully your D8443 will be working the way it was, and you can start playing those old tapes again.